everybody, so I've been 3D printing again and of course what we've got here is the Darwin Wind Turbine which I love more dearly than my cat. I've printed a whole load of pieces like this which are the vanes if you've been following the videos and the vanes go into this section here with a little recess so that we've got this capture bit. What I have to do is glue all these bits together which mostly consists of sticking those vanes in there and then I've printed a cone because that sits on that, catches the wind, cone directs it onto that. So let's put all that together with some crazy glue. Okay, and that's it glued together. <laughs> it's pretty neat. So the idea is this bit sticks up. So, you know, you could put it on a roof or a tower or whatever you wanted, but that sticks up where it's gonna capture the wind from every single side. Now, I've actually covered this a lot on the other videos that we've done, but if you haven't watched those videos, and these fins here, are angled at 35 degrees sloping downwards. And when I say 35 degrees, I mean 35 degrees to that direction, because in theory, that's the direction of the wind. So the 35 degrees that way. There are eight of them, so we can try and capture it from all directions. I've put these extra bits of baffle fins on. Most of it is complete and not a guesswork. I'm not actually sure about things like the size of those baffles, that sort of stuff. Anyway captures the wind and then directs it from the, by this cone to either a pipe or in my case directly onto this motor. It's a PC fan that I've turned into be a generator because I've got two of them and that means I can compare. But it's on that little generator there. Now I don't think that needs to be here, I think it can be further away. That's the general arrangement of it being the whole idea of this Darwin wind pipe. Of course what we want to do now Test it. Okay, so I've got a fan blowing on it. You see we're lighting a little LED. We've got a couple of volts out of it and it looks like a couple of milliamps. And that may not sound brilliant, but this thing has a 20 millimeter blade length. Uh, the wind speed, I've measured it with my anemometer, about 2.7 meters per second. And from that, with this size, you can expect somewhere around about three, four milliwatts. So actually, it's bang on, which is kind of really cool in itself. Okay, so round about there is 2.7 meters per second. There. Let's <laughs> put that there. Okay, so that isn't even turning. At 2.7 meters per second for this one, it hasn't got enough energy to overcome the internal torque of this um, generator and the load that it's connected to. So that's a bit poor. Okay, so. <laughs> Given this produced nothing in that wind speed, and this produced what you would expect it to produce, a few milliwatts, you can quite honestly say that this one is infinitely better than this one, because this produces nothing, so it must be infinitely better. But let's be a bit more serious about that. This one's producing something, this one's producing nothing, and of course the question is why? Now, Obviously, this has a bigger surface area, so it's always going to be better because it's capturing more wind. It captures the wind and then funnels it down here in this cone where it's going in a cone. So, it must be speeding up. It must be speeding up because 2.7 is what goes in and this 2.7 won't turn this. It must be speeding up to turn this. And so we're capturing a bit more wind. I mean, I, I think the area here is about the same as the area here, but I guess there's a bit blowing here and there's a bit blowing in here. So we're actually getting a bit more wind out of it. The wind's traveling a little bit faster. So for the same size of propeller, which is what we've got at the bottom here, we're getting more out of it because we put this structure on top. And of course, that's what I've been saying. Now, the whole point about this is that this will capture wind from any direction, which is why it's an octagon. Because you only get winds in single directions in specific places. Winds from any direction are much more common in urban environments, and that's why we've got the wind coming in any direction. Now, if you think about it, there's a great big wall right the way across here, so anything that's hitting that wall is bouncing back on the other side of the wall, nothing is happening. So, in effect, only half of that fan was being hit by wind, and so the whole area isn't actually doing anything. So, it's quite a lot better, actually, than this. And of course, if we're just using one turbine to generate, we can get an awful lot more out of that turbine, and so the turbine cost is cheaper, because you have to build this structure. But you have to build a structure for a wind turbine, whatever you do, because you're supposed to stick this thing up in the air. 
Having no mechanical moving parts, this is going to last for as long as the pen work. It's going to last an awful long time. So I think there's an awful lot to this. Now, I have made some random ideas. I mean, these fins, I've no idea at the moment if they're any good or not. Remember the first version we did had no fins at all. So maybe the fins aren't needed. Uh, I'm guessing I'm going to have to test that. And these are at 35 degrees to the flat plane, as we said, and that seems to be critical, but the spacing between them? Got no idea. The other people have suggested the hexagon, which maybe that's going to work. I quite like the octagon and it's no trouble for me, but maybe a hexagon would work as well. We put it into this cone to reduce it to the size of the turbine, but can we put a pipe on there as well? Well, I would think so, but again, I don't really know and I don't really know what kind of dimensions that cone should have to make a good venturi because without a doubt that is what's happening to get the increase in the wind speed so still lots of unknowns about it but the basic design i would say is giving very positive results indeed after all it's giving out infinitely more than this anyway i hope you enjoyed the video that's certainly what the darwin design is going to be for me and i'm sure lots of other people have lots of other design ideas We've talked about this before, about the um, hyperbolic funnels. I like these flats just because they're easy to make. You can make something like this from flat panels. I really like that. If you want hyperbolic curves, uh, funnels, then by all means do that, because that, that would work. Would it work any better? For the cost? I don't know. Maybe. It's probably worth an investigation. Probably not the way I would go. I would go stick with this flat panel design, I think, just because I believe that makes it easy for anybody to make if they don't have the technology to make it. Again, this um, thing here is just a PC fan because I've got them and it's easy to do a comparison. It's one million percent. That's not a very good design of a wind turbine. It just does something so we can get a comparable measurement out of it. 100% that design is rubbish and so there's lots of wind turbine designs themselves that you could be sticking here because this really isn't a wind turbine, it's actually a wind catcher. It catches the wind, focuses it, points it on the turbine. You can still do an awful lot to improve that just by improving the turbine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you're enjoying the series, I hope you're actually investigating this yourself. Thank you very much for watching and Please do remember to like and subscribe.